who says you can't put together the best bass anglers in the universe with the fifth largest city in America? That cheesesteaks and Independence Hall can't go down perfectly with bass boats and gritty competition? Ah! That folks who love the Eagles, the Flyers, and the Phillies aren't ready to raise the roof for their favorite fishermen? So let's ring the Liberty Bell, cross the Delaware multiple times in search of a winner at the first ever Bassmaster Elite Series in Philadelphia. State angler Mike Iconelli. Are we going to see a lot of this? Absolutely. The crowds in Philadelphia are a thing to behold. I will say this right now. Philly fans are the loudest, most awesome fans we've been anywhere in the country. This is the most fanatical bunch of fans I have ever seen in my life. Holy smokes. There's never been a crowd like this. I'm going to tell you something. When you're looking up on the hill, you got a picture of this crowd. This is amazing. That's right. I said it. The fifth largest city in the United States. Not the usual place for a Bassmaster Elite Series event, but here we are. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Throw in some New Jersey, some Delaware from the tri-state area. Teeming with bass fishermen. We know that, but would they show up? I'm Tommy Sanders. Welcome to the show. Here with Mark Zona and we needn't worry about that. This is like maybe the biggest sports town in America. Of course they showed up, and of course they were over the top. Yeah, over the top. Rabid. Rabid. You could definitely say that. And the other thing about this tournament, one of the most dynamic tournaments, if not the most dynamic tournaments, in bass fishing history, what went on here. And the reason why, there are three factors you have to overcome on this body of water. Number one being, we just don't have any history here with the Bass Masters. Number two, well, the water fluctuates about eight feet tidal swing every huge. eight hours. That is huge. A lot of our anglers not used to that. And number three, they have to deal with one angler that does have a lot of history here. Michael Iconelli grew up walking the banks of this river. If you can overcome those three small factors, you raise the trophy. All right, well, there's the way it lays out. Now, we talk about no history up here. We do have history in the area, an urban fishery very similar in this part of the country. Well, the, the classic Pittsburgh, 2005. Exactly right. Crowds were huge there. Crowds were going crazy there. The other thing was that was a tough body of water. Yeah. Delaware River, a tough body of water. Not this tough, not as tough as Pittsburgh. And here's the reason why. You talk about that tidal swing. You could literally be sitting in eight feet of water fishing and then all of a sudden the bottom drops out. When that tide gets moving, it is ripping and your boat is literally going three to four miles an hour. And the other side of it is you can be running through a creek and instantly be on that right there on dry land in a matter of minutes. Given all that, everyone who thought the hometown favorite was going to win this one wire to wire got a bit of a shock on day one. How about it? Former classic champ Boyd Duckett coming in with 16-14 for the lead. And weighing in a bag of bass at almost 17 pounds. Really unheard of this time. He really unheard of for most of the year on the Delaware River. Boyd Duckett would soon learn on day number two. Well, those fish are there one day and they are gone the next. It's an afternoon gig. Well, at least I learned that. So if I survive today, you know, I won't start here because it's obviously an afternoon hole. They're up in that grass. Pretty steep wall of grass, isn't it? And watch it drop off. See it right there? Now it's gone. You know, it's just like a boat length wide and then it gets slick. It's just a, right there on the, on the lip is that grass line and it drops from like five or six to 10 or 11. A good one. Get tired there, fish. Get tired. Just took a little while, didn't it? Trying to hand line. They're bad dudes, man. I'm telling you. Finally, 
Finally. Fair to say Tommy Sanders, one of the most interesting fish landings we've seen in the last few seasons on the Elite Series. A little something different for the folks at home there. Boy, duck at finding the going a little tough on day number two. And Morizo Shimizu, another one of our guys way up there on day number two, finds himself with company at a crucial spot. Well, one of the problems with the Delaware River on day number two, a lot of the anglers that caught them on day number one, Morizo, one of those anglers, well, they had a little extra company on their areas they were fishing. And, well, he has a TV show. I have a TV show in Japan. <laughs> so, I know I have to catch. <laughs> I know. <laughs> One more. <laughs> yes! Dude is absolutely awesome. Very nice. A few laughs, a few keepers with Morizo Shimizu on day number two. Doesn't catch him quite as good, but still north of 10 pounds. Good enough for a two-day total of 22, six, and third place. Your day one leader, Boy Duckett, he would definitely struggle, only catching a little bit over six pounds, falling to second place, 23 pounds and five ounces. Now to Michael Iaconelli, the hometown favorite by a long shot. Michael Iaconelli struggled a bit on day number one. With nine pounds and two ounces, not really a struggle, but day two, man, he's got him. Looking for 14-4 to take the lead. Nine pounds and two ounces yesterday, 15 pounds! Yeah! Takes the lead from 21st place all the way to number one with 24 pounds, three ounces. The whole town favorite takes the lead. Uh, it's, a, it's a good feeling, man. I tell you, the Delaware River is one of the most interesting, tough, exciting places in the entire world. It's all about tide, it's all about current, and it's all about timing. Yesterday, my timing was off. I felt like I was chasing the wrong tide. Today, it all clicked. So, second inning. A couple more innings to go. If I keep my timing up, uh, I'm excited about what will happen. And the last thing the rest of the field wanted to see after the second day of competition, Michael Iaconelli gaining momentum, and most of all, feeding off momentum. Michael Iaconelli moving into the driver's seat right on time. Day number two, albeit by less than a pound over our day one leader, Boyd Duckett. Shimizu hanging in there. Bill Lowen moving up. John Cruz, Kevin Short, Scott Rook. You'll see a couple of river anglers out there on day number three. Michael Iaconelli, does he love being a hometown hero? Absolutely, and he can give us a few insights into the mind of the Philly fan. They want the trophy. They're like all Philadelphia sports fans. Doesn't matter if it's the Phillies, the Eagles, the Sixers. They want to win. And if they don't get a win, they're pissed, more pissed off than I am. And I didn't, I'm not even that mad. It's done in a passionate, loving way. That's Philly. That's the Northeast. Some people see it as, as strange, maybe obnoxious, borderline, you know, anger management issues. But that's, that's who we are. And I embrace it. The Bass Master Elite Series at the Delaware River in Philadelphia is brought to you by Triton Boats. Nitro. Toyota. And by Berkeley. First ever Bassmaster Elite Series event from Philadelphia, PA, Lincoln Financial Field there, home of the Eagles. The NFL cranking up just weeks away. A lot more things to see in Philly. So many iconic places that are part of the American landscape. Hey, Dave Mercer's standing by with a Philly-related question today on Six Seconds. Here we are in Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love and one of the most historic cities in America. We decided to test our Elite Series pros on their history. One of the most famous residents ever of this area, Ben Franklin, how many terms did he serve as United States President? Four. Benjamin Franklin served just one term. Shoot. Um, whoo, you put me on the spot here. My history's a little slow here, probably two terms. I say two. Why, why, why you make me look dumb? Can I call my brother? My brother's a history teacher. Zero. He never was a president. You, you got an answer. Brother got back to you. Ben Franklin was never a president, and uh, he's the only non-president to be on the American dollar. How about that? 
Dave Mercer name-checking Ben Franklin right there on six seconds. Let's take a look as we head into this third day of competition. There he is, the hometown favorite, Michael Iconelli, on top by less than a pound ahead of day one leader Boyd Duckett. We see a lot of talented anglers in this field. And really, you know, coming in this tournament, it, it was said that this could be the toughest Bassmaster Elite Series ever. Well, that's not the case. There's definitely, well, your top 12 guys are catching them. And, well, right behind the favorite, Iconelli, are some of the best river fishermen, well, not in the Bassmaster Elite Series, but on the planet. 20 seconds away from the third day of the Bassmaster Elite on the Delaware River. City fishing at its finest. We're going to get them today. Iconelli obviously understandably primed and ready to go on day number three. This, this is where he makes his move. Exactly. We're going to follow him down river. And really, his track, he's not going to go that far. He's only going to travel probably about seven miles. And he's going to go on the back of Woodbury Creek. He literally grew up walking the bank back here. And when you get into Woodbury Creek and the tide has fallen out, well, you could see the bank above Iconelli's head almost right here. And here's the beauty of this. He knows all the little hidden gems. In fact, you know, look at the bank right here. There's actually a sunken barge in front of him. Timing's critical here. I mean, timing on a normal tournament, uh, ledge lake, uh, natural lake is important. But you mix in a seven foot tide, you mix in dirty, muddy water coming in at any minute. It really does boil down to the minute and the second. And I've been fortunate to have bursts of perfect timing. It's gone out for about an hour for us, which is good. Then it gets tough. Last hour of outgoing, first hour incoming, we're good. As soon as it starts getting real high, it starts getting tough. There's a big one. Giant. Oh my God. Oh my God. Three pounder to start the day. I'll suck your face all day, baby. Look at that thing. Delaware River Giant right there, guys. God, yeah. What a big one, dude. That's a giant to the river. <laughs> that, that's like catching a five pounder anywhere else been said a hundred times, Michael Iaconelli, getting getting the rap for calling average size fish a giant. That is a giant on the Delaware River. You have to work for good, healthy fish here. So he catches that bass and instantly goes across the river, which a lot of people question on day number three that morning. And he said, it's timing. He gets to this area right here and he said, the first hour of incoming tide, it concentrates these bass. And his second choice of areas was perfect. Big one. Big one. Come off, look at that. You see that? Two pounder. God! Thank you, Lord! Did you see, you saw that? Oh my gosh. Man, it's when it's going your way, it just happens. Delaware River special, baby. That's a, that's a typical Delaware fish right there. Two pounder. A lot of them. They're good ones. This thing could be loaded. This is a, when they get on here, they get on here. Let's keep our fingers crossed. This jig's being very special to me this week, man. This is a, this is a brand new jig I'm helping to design. This is a Berkeley Chigger Chunk. Biting it down a little bit. Small profile bait. Real key on this river. Lots of interesting places all up and down the river, but not all of them hold bass. I can Ellie obviously comfortable that this is one of those places where they live. Also comfortable with his mm, bait. Yes, definitely. He has one primary weapon. But the other thing is, on day number three, we got to get out there. We were out there sure. with I can Ellie, smiling, having a great time. <laughs> what was happening? Something we usually don't no, see no. with Mike, you know, when we're in tournament competition. But the bait he really relied on is this little half ounce compact jig. And that's the key word, compact. He said he did not want a bulky bait. The reason why would get more bites. And he would get quality bites on this. The other thing was the trailer. That's a Berkeley Chigger Chunk. And he said, it just gave me confidence I would get bite after bite after, which in this tournament, that was huge. But yeah. the other thing was timing. Iconelli constantly was talking about timing. And the biggest factor here, we are looking at it. 
You can't experience how much it rises unless you're literally watching it with your own eyes. And the biggest problem is when you're looking at this underwater animation, when that water's high, these fish are spread out. They're not concentrated. And as the tide would go down, you would hear almost every angler say, I need a low tide. The reason why? It sucks these bass to that cover. And Ike Nelly said, trust me, there are key pieces of cover. And when it would concentrate them, he said, look, I could have fished there an hour ago, never got a bite. But timing, hitting that low tide, he would pitch that jig in there. And the beauty of this is a lot of this structure, he'd get more than one bite. He would get two or three. This is a big one. Oh, giant. It's a limit. It's a limit. It's called on now. Them decisions on this river, identifying the tides, making a decision based on the tide, critical. No other word for it. Absolutely impressive. Possibly it could have been predicted. Michael Iconelli on his home stomping grounds, the Delaware River, and everything running right on the rails, going right according to schedule. Before we break away for a minute, very important to note the passing of a, a cherished member of the bass fishing community, Pooley Dawson. We lost this great member of our family in the past week, and our thoughts are with his family. His memory will live on with all of us. Say goodbye to Pooley. Our next angler from Bixby, Oklahoma, Freddie Rubanis! How many Eagle fans we got out there? Yeah. Go Cowboys! Theresa yeah. Shabisa! Go Eagle! Yeah, Morzo Shimizu, not a great day three, but he knows how to light up these fans here. It's not too hard to do. Kevin Short, one of those river anglers you look to do very well here, doing well on day three. Exactly right. Day number three, sitting in sixth place. And Tommy, I think the best line of the season, maybe. And coming into this, I knew that Mike Iaconelli was going to be hard to beat, all right? Yeah. And let me, But let me tell you what, hey, I love Ike, but Hey, nothing would thrill me more than to piss on his little parade. You know what I'm saying? Hey. I'm sorry. That is one of the best lines ever. <laughs> Keeping it real with Kevin Short. We had to have our eyes on Shaw Grigsby. Day one, only 4-2. Day two, 14-15. He comes in with nine pounds today to put himself right there, firmly in the top five. Well, one of the most consistent anglers in the country right now, Jason Christie, cut his teeth shallow water in Oklahoma and said, man, I love tough events and we got one here it's in fourth place, 28 pounds and three ounces. Tough events on rivers, also a specialty for this guy. Scott Rook won a major in Little Rock on the Arkansas River with a lot of the same sorts of quirks and, and out of the way spots to go and hide, doing well up here. And it is a theme of river rats right now. Bill Lowen absolutely grew up fishing some of the toughest bodies of water, number one being the Ohio River, second place after day number three, 30 pounds, seven ounces. Bill Lowen hanging in there, but the man they're all waiting for, of course, no secret about that, Michael Iaconelli. We watched him out there day number three, totally in control, did most of his damage on the, that golden time, the last hour of outgoing, the first hour of in. He said timing was the key, but the key during this event is when he got on stage, the place would erupt. crowd and tell me what's going through your mind. Woo! I tell you, what, what an unbelievable feeling to, uh, to, to be home, to have this kind of welcome. You know, no matter what happens in this tournament, man, it, it makes me emotional to know that all these people out here love the sport of fishing. Growing up, I wanted to be a pro bass fisherman since I was five years old. Everybody thought I was crazy. You know what? I did it!
Always do it on my own, so I gotta get through it And the only thing I know is to love what I'm doing